This is one of the classic genera of true cacti. Let's talk about Mammillaria. What's up fellow plant enthusiasts? My name is Dylan and this is Baines Botanicals. Today we're going to be talking about Mammillaria. Uh, Mammillaria is one of the cacti that I immediately think of when I think, okay. Okay, well, I guess we have a little visitor. Oh, say hi Spice. Say hi. Hi baby. She's like, what's going on? Why can't I be a part of this? Okay, go away. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Um, so when I think about a cactus, Mammillaria is one of the first ones that come to mind. It's just kind of a classic, um, along with like Opuntia and Sirius. Like those are just the shapes I think of like ball cacti, column cacti, and paddle cacti, not in that order. But uh, anyway, Mammillaria is extremely easy to care for as most cacti are. Uh, which we'll get to. But anyway, this one is flowering and you see that little bitty yellow flower right there. It hasn't fully opened yet, but you can also see that, I'm trying to get it to focus. Uh, you can also see that it has a lot of other little yellow flowers on it. Like when they're, when they're given sufficient light and you're taking care of them, they will flower fairly easily. Um, there are certain species of cacti where you really have to work for it. Uh, Mammillaria isn't necessarily one of them. This is a Mammillaria uh, gracilis. Uh, and while we're at it, here is the taxonomy information for Mammillaria. Uh, we are in the family Cactaceae, which is the true cacti, um, meaning that they originated in the American Southwest, uh, as opposed to Euphorbia, which are also a cactus in the loose sense of the word, but they are from Africa. So uh, yes, where are we going with that? Well, yeah, that's the taxonomy information. Uh, as far as care goes, they just need bright light, bright indirect light. Um, something this small, you really would want to put in the direct sun. And if you do have a bigger mammillaria, just be sure to acclimate it if you are going to put it outside. Don't just throw it out there in the heat of the summer because it will burn. Um, Oh, Spice has hiccups. Anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, bright light, not a low light plant because they come from the desert. So uh, yes, as far as water goes, let them dry out. Let them stay dry for just a little bit, a um, few days maybe, depending on how big your plant is. Like this one, I just watered it tonight and it doesn't show any signs of like, you know, stress or anything. And it's been about maybe eight or nine days since I've watered it. Of course, we're in the middle of uh, winter here in the uh, U.S. at the moment. So one thing about cacti is that they do go into a soft dormancy where you don't have to water them as much in the wintertime because they're not using the water. So a lot of people make the mistake of watering their cacti the same amount that they water in the summer and if you live someplace where the temperature changes a lot, that's not like the best thing to do just because they don't need all of that extra water. So um, yeah, but just let them dry out, let them stay dry for a little bit before you water them again, uh, just because they retain so much water in their stems, in their bodies. Uh, as far as soil goes, just a cacti succulent soil, something that has more perlite or sand in it, so uh, it has that extra drainage. And then humidity, doesn't need it. And then fertilizer, uh, just be careful with fertilizing. As with most cacti or succulents, they don't need as much necessarily just because they're not growing as much. It will help them when it comes to flowering a little bit, but you don't want to over fertilize uh, just because they do retain the water. So they're retaining uh, what you give them a lot more than like a tropical plant would. Uh, since they don't grow as fast, they just don't use through as much either. So if you want to get like a cacti specific like fertilizer, they do make the ratios. Uh, I can't think of what the ratio is for a typical cactus, but it's more um, attuned for cacti growth. So I fertilize bi-weekly in the summer and then not at all during the winter. Uh, well, late fall, 
winter, early spring, just because, like I said, they're just not using as much water and they're really not using fertilizer. Did we cover everything? I think we covered everything already. That's mammalaria for you. Uh, there's a lot of different species and um, variants and cultivars of mammalaria. So if you like cacti and you like cacti that these tend to stay, especially this one, these tend to stay smaller for longer. Um, I've had this one for, oh geez, maybe a year, maybe two years. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, it's put out, you know, new little, new little pups. And if I wanted to, while we're talking about propagation, uh, <laughs> you could break one of these off and start a new plant. Just let the, uh, when you break it off, let it callus for maybe a day, and then you can just stick it in the soil. You don't have to even use rooting hormone, really. And uh, yeah, that's it about mammalaria. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing and for liking my videos and everything. Um, and for your comments, let me know what cool species of mammalaria you guys might have. Um, I'll do my best not to go out and buy it because I do. I love when you guys recommend stuff because I'm like, ooh, I kind of want that. Maybe I should go get that. Um, but anyway, yeah, let me know what your experience is. And uh, yeah, until the next video, I will see you guys very soon. Thank you.